Hello YouTube chess lovers and my friends this is Gunjan here and welcome to the fourth part of dirty chess tricks to win fast in this lecture I'm going to show you an interesting line against the Karakan defense if you don't have any system against the Karakan defense then I certainly insist you to look at this line in depth because it contains lots of tricks and traps now before we see these tricks there's a one point I like to mention is in this video I'm not covering the whole theory I'm just showing you the tricks exist in this line so if you have a question like what happens if black does this move then I strongly recommend you that look at the theory section of this line so considering all this uh, let's get started after e4 the Karakan defense start with the move c6 and the normal move over here for the white is to play the d4 but I'm not recommending that move instead of that I'm recommending the move knight to c3 and after the usual response of the Karakan defense which is the d4 now white will play the move knight to f3 so you can see I have highlighted by the arrows over here mainly black has three good choices by the way the main line is knight to f6 which we are not going to see in this lecture because uh, there's a big theoretical line without any tricks so uh, you have to study that but we are certainly looking some nice tricks exist in this moves and those moves you are going to meet frequently at the club level so the first move I want to see is the very natural looking the move d4 so attacking the knight and here white should retrieve the knight to the e2 and attack the d pawn now the natural response over here for the black is to play c5 so protecting that pawn and now once again white will renew the threat of capturing the d4 via the move c3 now if d capture c3 then knight capture c3 and white position is very fine but I bet that many of your opponent will think oh I can grab more space and hit that knight with the move d3 what's wrong in that the natural response is when white plays the move knight to f4 which has a double hit to the d3 black can play the move c4 and it looks like black has a very impressive pawn structure early in the game well see yourself because we have the first trick on the table which is queen to a4 check now no matter how black response is for example whether black plays knight to c6 or bishop to d7 white can capture the c4 pawn and now the amazing thing is once the c4 pawn drop there is no way black can defend the d3 pawn so for example the usual line continues with the e6 and after bishop takes d3 just in the opening with under the 10 moves white is in the winning position so please watch out for this wonderful trick now most likely when you reach this position your opponent is going to capture the e pawn and after white recapture he will churn out this nature looking move that is bishop to f5 in fact this is one of the most theoretical move recommended in the Karakan books but here it's a big big mistake because first of all white can play the move knight to g3 attacking the bishop and after bishop goes back to g6 now white can play the move h4 so you can see h5 is coming and it will trap the bishop so again the move recommended from the black perspective is the move h6 the move h6 provides bishop to hide to the h7 square so after knight to e5 bishop will drop back to the h7 and here comes our second amazing trick that is queen to h5 so you can see right now white is threatening to checkmate black on f7 so black response is pretty much forced black has to play the move g6 so it's attacking the queen but the downside is this bishop is trapped and now white has the another shot which is bishop to c4 and especially if you're playing very quick games this is most likely happen that without uh, much thinking black straight away capture the queen which is g cross h5 afterwards white will simply checkmate black king so that is one cheap trick exists 
don't expect every time it will happen but sometimes you will get this most of your opponent will spot this and they will likely to play the move e6 so stopping the mate threat and now white will play the move queen to e2 and you might thought that the trick is over but no still the biggest trick is yet to come because at this position believe it or not but somehow black queen has to protect the f7 and no other black piece can move let me show you what i mean imagine that black plays a random move such as knight to f6 well here comes the big shot because now white can stun the black with the move knight takes f7 and here black has to give up the rook and move out the queen because if black foolishly capture this knight then after queen takes e6 jack king to g7 and queen to f7 leads to checkmate instead of knight to f6 if your opponent plays bishop to e7 then more or less the same story because we are going to capture the f7 again hitting the two pieces and after king recapture we take the e6 with a check and now white will play a quiet but a very dangerous move that is knight to e4 i got this position in one of my game and here my opponent responded with the move queen to d7 so he is desperate to get rid of my queen but after just one move queen e5 and my opponent realized that he lost a piece there is no way black can stop white to capture that rook because if black plays knight to f6 then white can simply capture this knight because that bishop is pinned and on the top we have a fork now at this position instead of h6 you might think after h5 white doesn't have any tricks left well to give you a surprise let me show you one of my game which will tell you the story so here i responded with the move knight to e4 attacking the bishop bishop cannot drop back because the h5 pawn is hanging so my opponent responded with a neutral looking move that is queen to d6 protecting that bishop and here i capture that bishop and after black recapture with the queen now i played the move bishop to e2 so you can see i am pressurizing the h5 pawn and this is one of the big drawback of this line well here black has the only move to protect that pawn that is the knight to f6 afterwards i continue with the normal looking move which is d4 and here black follow the theory with knight b to d7 and after bishop to g5 he played the move e6 which looks very natural because it's freeing up the bishop but after white's next move probably black will regret his move and this is most likely happen in your game as well because i played the move bishop to d3 and more or less queen doesn't have any squared so my opponent has to just give up the knight and in a way white has a winning position now after bishop to f5 and when white plays knight to g3 another move black can try is the move bishop to g4 against this white can trick black with this move which is bishop to c4 because as per the normal theoretical move that is knight to f6 can be leads to a disaster after bishop cross f7 check king takes and knight to e5 check so for king bishop and the king and after king goes somewhere for example let's say e8 then not only white will regain the piece but white is a clear pawn up where black king lost the castle right in the second line after d cross e4 and knight cross e4 black can try this second move which is knight to d7 well against this if you are very desperate and you know that your opponent is weaker then you can try out this another cheap trick that is queen to e2 and after the normal looking move knight to f6 can leads to immediate disaster because white can play the move knight to d6 and this is a checkmate don't laugh this can be happen but don't expect too many of them because most of your opponents spot this so instead of queen to e2 i recommend he over here is you play the move bishop to c4 and this has amazing venom whenever i reach this position probably 50 to 60% of my opponent fall into this trick so please watch out this so after bishop to c4 
the normal looking move over here is knight to f6 because if now white capture that knight then black can always regain the knight with dawn of the knight but here white has a fantastic move which is knight to g5 so hitting the f7 so the only response left is e6 and now white will play the move queen to e2 now as per the theoretical manual the only good move over here is knight to d5 but i will give you guarantee most of your opponent will not find this and instead of that they'll go for this a uh, tracking looking move that is knight to b6 and the funny thing is if you turn on the engines or the any computers even they are recommending this move but this cannot be good for black because after white's next move that is knight to e5 how the hell black is going to stop knight takes f7 the answer is cannot the most accurate reply over here is knight captures bishop and queen captures bishop and after queen to d5 white will simply exchange the queen and then take the free pawn and no matter how black wriggles over here those knights can easily come out so for example at this point black has to play the move rook to g8 and then white will simply castle on the king side and you might thought that h6 will nab the knight but no white can play the move rook to even check and after bishop to e7 knight to d6 check because that bishop is spin and let's say king goes to the d7 then white can simply capture the bishop if now black capture the g knight then white will capture the bishop so more or less black has to capture the c knight afterwards this knight will come back and after all the transaction white is a clear pawn up now at this point instead of knight to b6 if your opponent play the move such as bishop to e7 then this is another big trick because now white can again go for our old friend that is knight takes f7 i think you get a hang of this knight to f7 because it leads to a great victory for white again black cannot capture the knight because if black capture the knight then queen takes e6 black cannot go either f8 or e8 so queen has to come out afterwards it's a mate in four so white will continue with the king to f7 check and if king goes to that six then d4 and the only reply left is g5 afterwards black will simply capture this pawn and it's a checkmate and instead of king to h6 if king goes to the f5 then it's a more funny because now we are going to play bishop to e6 check and king has again the only space left that is f4 afterwards white will play the move d3 and this is also a checkmate last but not least if your opponent is very aggressive he might try out this move which is bishop to g4 but there are some nasty tricks exist in this line as well here white will continue with the move h3 black will continue with the move bishop to h5 there is no point of giving up the bishop pair just for nothing and now white will take the d pawn and after black recapture it's time for the bishop check now black cannot block this check with the knight to d7 because the d4 pawn drops so more or less knight c6 is forced afterwards white will continue with the move g4 attacking the bishop and after bishop to g6 white will play the move h4 so you can see now h5 is threatened so that is a one kind of nuisance for the black so the most natural looking response over here is the move h6 but now our dirty chess trick start with the move knight to e4 we are pressurizing more on c6 square which black has to defend with the move rook to c8 afterwards we are going to play the move queen to f3 so it's a double attack to the d5 pawn and when black defend this pawn with the move e6 now we have the very amazing trick that is the move h5 black will find his horror that he cannot move the bishop because if the bishop moves anywhere then queen takes f7 leads to the checkmate so i hope you enjoy this wonderful tricks please feel free to comment on my video and i'll meet you soon